VB and Toadswoot. Everyone give them a warm welcome. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> All right, so this is FSA. Probably most people have not seen her run, but a lot of people have definitely talked about it. Um, it's very it's interesting. interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely unique. All right, ready when you are. Okay, I'm good. Okay, uh, I'll do a countdown. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, so now that you waited uh, about five minutes for the run to start, you're gonna have to wait another five minutes for me to do anything. <laughs> so we're just gonna talk about this game. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty hard to follow, I think, for someone watching for the first time. Um, yeah, if you haven't played this before, um, it'll probably look a little bit weird. Um, unlike most other Zelda games, this game is actually split up in 20, uh, 24 levels and, well, in 8 worlds, and each world has 3 levels. Um, and, for example, if you find a certain item in a level, if you find the boomerang, for example, in the next level you will start with 0 items again. Um, that heart containers applies. don't carry over either, so... I was gonna say, that also applies to heart <laughs> containers. It's basically like 24 little games pretty much yeah you think about it that way mm -hmm. nothing carries over it's a little bit different from story what usually items, so don't actually do anything um so the goal of kind of each level is you'll see me collect these gems which aren't rupees for some reason but um and after you get 2000 you get a leveled up sword and basically the whole point is that you want to break the barriers at the end of each level so you'll see me collecting gems throughout each level, except for the very last one, which we'll get to later. Um, but so that's why I'm kind of uh, going around trying to get all that stuff. And that's actually where a lot of the randomness comes in this game. Um, we, we try to make it as consistent as possible, but for the first couple levels, there actually is a chance I might not have enough. But if I don't have enough, it's not really a big deal. It just sends me back to the beginning and I just go through it until I have enough. So. Yeah. Um, and there's plenty of backups. There's no- it's never too yeah. tight. Yeah. Um... You can only progress the text in this game with the A button, which is a lot different than the other 2D Zeldas. Yeah. Um... So you'll notice that we're playing on Japanese. A lot of the time, JP is faster because of text. Uh, that isn't really the case in this game. Text moves so fast and it moves by text box that uh, the JP text isn't really any faster. Uh, but there are some JP exclusive tricks that we'll do later. Yeah, actually, the, the text that you saw at the very beginning, where it was like scrolling really slow, it's the only time Japanese text actually saves time. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter at all. Uh, so here you get to pick your uh, favorite maiden, and <laughs> if you don't pick white or red, you're wrong. So uh, just you know, <laughs> be careful. Um, something else about gems is that a lot of the time we would have uh, we would have certain skips for levels, but because we definitely need gems at the end of each level, sometimes we cannot use those skips because we um, would s skip some gems instead. And we cannot finish the level if we skip too many gems. There's still a couple of, or a lot of, very interesting skips in this game, though. It's one of the hardest parts of the game is saying yes to this dialogue box. So when you pull the Force Sword, um, you have to choose yes or no to pull it. And for some reason, the cursor defaults to no. So you have to manually move it over, which is pretty hard. Uh, to do correctly while trying to mesh quickly. It's not uncommon to accidentally say no to pulling out the sword. Dang, first try. Too easy. <laughs> so, not much left in an intro. Yeah, so the last part's gonna have that scrolling text, which, um, 
Again, it's faster on Japanese just because there's less characters. I think it only saves like. Uh, I know a good intro on English is like five twelve. Yeah, yeah. Something like that, and then a good intro on JP is four forty eight. So. And so, like Toad said in the beginning, you start basically fresh uh, every level. So I'm gonna get a few items here, but um, when I go to the next level, I won't have anything again. Kind of have to restart from the beginning. I guess something to mention is in this game, uh, you can only carry one item at a time. Uh, so yeah, right. that limits yeah. what you can do sometimes. All right, so going right into one one. Uh, right away, Z is going to be doing a jump slash to break these bushes, cut them down rather. Uh, the jump slash in this game is basically an attack you can move while doing. So it's pretty useful for speed tech, because you can you use stuff like cut down bushes while moving. You guys want to explain the formations and stuff? Just oh yeah. Touch on that. Um, so using the C stick on the GameCube controller, you can put the links into four different formations. There's the box formation, which you saw him do. There's C right and C down, which are the vertical and horizontal lines. And then there's also C left, which is the diamond formation. Um, C left's pretty situational, but the other three formations get used all the time. All right, here's a skip where he pulls a rock out of thin air and a fire rod comes out. <laughs> um, this rock is actually on the next that. screen, but uh, yeah. for some reason you can already um, pick up the rock on this screen. It's pretty nice. Yeah, the the backyard and the house are on this on different layers, but they're on top of each other. So you can kind of pick up the rock from a layer being above it. So throughout the game, you're going to see those shadow links. Uh, sometimes they're like just enemies out in the field, like here, and sometimes they're a full mini boss sort of thing, so depends. Alright, so here Z's gonna do the first out of bounds of the run. So basically the way this works is whenever you want, whenever you enter a GBA screen oh, like a second time, I think. Um whenever you enter a GBA screen or exit for that matter, there's one frame where you can press X, which is the button that disbands the party. And the links will be displaced on the previous screen out of bounds. Uh, because it hasn't updated their position yet. So, um, you can do that and then go back to the main screen and switch to the Out of Bounds link. And there he used that to get up to the bridge early. Uh, OOBs are really annoying because they're frame perfect and there isn't a very good queue for them. Yeah, basically, the queue is different for every screen that you do it on. So, we do it about five or six times, I guess, throughout the run. Uh... Something yeah, that's a few times. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, so the berries you saw I, that I broke at the end, that's what you need the level 2 sword essentially. Yeah. But as VP mentioned earlier, um, Z is using a GameCube controller, which is usually, usually what you would use for a one player adventure. Um, you actually do not need. A, a GBA to play this game, unless you want to play multiplayer, in which case you do need two to four GBAs. Alright, so coming up at the start of Cave 1-2 uh, here, uh, there's going to be a trick called Freeze Clip. So basically, you need to push these, in this screen, you need to push the four blocks around the fire, and that'll put out the fire. Uh, and when the fire goes out, there's something in this game um, called Freeze Frames that occur when certain actions happen. And basically, they lock your inputs. Um, what am I trying to say? They lock your inputs, except you can buffer directions. So he's going to push that block and buffer C right. And a cool thing about freeze frames is you can actually clip links one block in during the frame if you buffer a direction if you buffer a direction on the C stick to do a formation. So he clipped the link into the door, which skipped the needing needing to use a key in that room, so he could save it for the next room instead. Oh god, never never ends with this thing. Uh, so this is a trick called formation menu roll. Uh, basically, if you buffer a formation menu, which is the quote-unquote intended way to use formations, uh, 
if you buffer that menu, in that case it's frame perfect because you're doing it with a green link. Um, if you buffer it frame perfectly, you can carry your roll momentum through certain actors, which is pretty nice because you can go through objects. Uh, it didn't save a ton of time there, but um, there are going to be some FMC rolls later that save a lot of time. There's also a regular FMC, which is not frame perfect, where you just call the links over and then buffer, and you'll see that in the next level, actually. Yeah, it probably becomes more clear once you see it in the next level. Yeah, so in this cave, you kind of, uh... You want to go, it's kind of like a Lost Woods type thing. Uh, where you, if you go in the wrong cave, you kind of go back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, you, you just go right, left, right. Every time. Uh, in this next screen, we're going to have our first Shadow Link fight. Uh, this is really the only one that is not super dumb. So. Yeah. So when you shoot, a, or when you uh, hit a Shadow Link, after you hit it once, it'll, um transform into a random link color and you have to hit the shadow link with the color he changes to this time there's only one shadow link so it's really easy uh in the future there will be two or even four so it gets worse this one's not too bad and they might also walk into caves or into portals or into houses into anything they want have some party yeah they can be pretty bad in later levels Got the roll storage, nice. Um, also whenever Z picks up some, some bigger uh, gems, he sometimes first picks up a pot or something. Or another that's because link. It, or another link, because it skips the picking up animation of the gem. And the text box. Mm -hmm. Um, 100 gems, 150 gems, and 300 gems all give you text box the first time you pick them up in each level. And 200. If green picks them up. And 200. Wait, that's 200, not 150. <laughs> okay, so 1-3 at the start here. He's gonna do something called Owl Skip. This is rolling and then formation, and then doing a C-right formation, and then doing, um... What are words? Then dropping the link. So you can carry the roll's uh, momentum forward, and doing that uh, precisely like he did uh, makes the um, blue link go around an owl trigger. Which skips an owl cutscene, saving a little bit of time. And here when you exit the cave, you're supposed to push this block. You can just do a nice little uh, hop with the sword, and the hitbox is big enough that you hit the switch. So this level has one of the hardest tricks in it, or I guess two of them. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm just hoping that I don't <laughs> mess it up for like two minutes. I'll be talking, but if you want me to be quiet, just... Uh, you should be okay. Okay. Um, so for the first trick, he's gonna need to get a GBA out of bounds off of this screen right here. Um, and then he's going to need to do a roll in the corner. <laughs> and for some reason, that puts the links up near the top of the ledge, but not quite high enough to get up on top. Uh, so he needs to do more rolls while doing formation menus. Um, to get to be able to clip up to the top. I got the OB. So this trick is a little bit dumb because um, as you spawn in the wall and then roll upwards, if you drop the FMC roll, you will get clipped out of the wall again and you will have to get uh, out of bounds again and do the whole thing again, which can waste a lot of time. Every time you fail it, you need to get the GBA OD again. Thankfully, you got it first try there. Yeah, everything is good. <laughs> Alright, so after this uh, horde fight screen with all the uh, blue dudes, um, is gonna be Barrier Skip. Uh, barrier Skip's a trick that's changed a lot throughout FSA history. Uh, if we had time, I'd talk about it. But we don't, so, um... Basically, what he's gonna be doing here is he's gonna set up purple, 
and then he's gonna do formation menu clip. Here you can see regular formation menu clips with purple. Nice, got it. So we clip purple into that blue electricity barrier type thing. Um, and basically, once you're clipped into an actor like that, you can move through walls uh, when you're calling the link over, which you're not normally supposed to be able to do. Um, so then he can very precisely, you have to um, get uh, purple link just barely out of bounds, so that when you call him, you have to very quickly um, cancel the formation menu in a precise way that'll clip him up to the ledge. Here's a trick called jump storage that's really easy, thankfully. Uh, you hold the link swords while jumping off of a ledge, and their jump gets stored until you uh, screen transition back onto the main screen again, and they jump up to the very top of the screen. Alright, so Phantom Ganon, Phantom Ganon 1 is actually a pretty interesting fight. Um, so basically we're going to be doing specific damage amounts to him, because he only- we, we basically need to poke him to certain, uh, damage values, because, um, he only gets up once you deal a certain amount of damage. So we need to get- damage him in a certain way, so that we can get a two cycle. Which uh, so, uh, so one of the things about this game is that, uh, pokes do different damage than, uh, slashes, kind of like A Link to the Past, I think. Yeah, and jump slashes um, also do more, which is unique to this game. Right. I believe jump slashes do the same as a spin? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, quick spins... Quick spins do the same amount of damage as slashes, I think. But if you do a spin, like, a different way, like, out of a roll, or... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Or the, a charge, I guess. The charge? Yeah. Oh, the... uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, this game's weird. Spin attacks are, like, the worst thing about this game. You can do them when you really don't want to in a yeah. lot of situations. So you it, get a, like, whenever you're done with a roll and you press the B button, uh, you get a quick spin for, like, a second. So you have to wait a little bit after you roll if you want to do a normal slash. And that can be really annoying. Jump slashes are really precise, by the way. Isn't it two frames? Yeah, in, yeah. in a two-frame window, you have to press a direction plus B. Mm -hmm. So when when you're first like learning this game, it takes a little bit to uh, get used to them. I mean, I every run I miss them a handful of times still. So. Um. So, T1, starting off, he's gonna go into the cave to get the slingshot. Um, this is gonna be so we can do a trick later called enemy stunning clipping. I don't even, I don't it probably know has a real name. <laughs> it's basically what? no clip. Yeah. You can go anywhere. It's just really limited with what you can do. Anyway, so first he's gonna do a formation menu clip past this lady. Um. To get to the other side of this screen. <clears throat> um. Yeah, so this oh. Zora screen we used to uh, use bombs for, and it was a disaster. <laughs> it was so awful. It's still pretty bad with slingshot, but it's yeah. a lot better. It's a lot better. That's why the current route is a lot better than the old one. Yeah. It's not really much faster to do the like like clip compared to the old route, but because we have the slingshot instead of the bombs of the Zora fight, it's just it, it's a lot better. It's not more consistent to you in terms of yeah. just because uh, it's RNG how frequently the Zoras pop out, even though their positions are always the same. All right, so this is the no clip type trick we were talking about. If you get uh, green stuck in a like like, and then Slingshot hit. Slingshot the light like with the other links. Uh, you can move Link anywhere for reasons. It looks really funny. <laughs> so I think this is the first Nova Bomb screen. 
So the way Nova Bombs work is if you're on the main screen when the timer reaches zero, you just die instantly no matter how much health you have. So you have to manage your cycles carefully whenever one of these comes up. You can also hit the Nova Bomb to make it explode a little bit faster. If oh, yeah. you so <laughs> wish to do. You can do that. That can be a strat. Wait, when we had bombs, that was the strat. Yeah, it used to be. Alright, nice. So use the bombs to kill those uh, three drum soldiers there. It's a relatively new strat. Yeah, if you don't kill the gem soldiers in a certain amount of time, they just, uh, kill themselves, I guess, and you only get one gem <laughs> instead of a hundred. Yeah. Alright, so after this Nova Bomb screen, which is really free, you just walk up. I, I don't really get the screen. Why it's an overbomb screen, rather. Um, you have the lobster, our boy. Um, so you the one and only. It's pretty self explanatory, I guess. You hit the correct claw with the correct link. Um, it's just the lobster is really annoying because the way he spins and the directions he goes are RNG. Nice damage cancel. It was, a, it was a really good lobster fight. A lot of the time, they, they don't go so well. Yeah, one of the one of the problems with the lobster, like he seems easy, but whenever you hit him with a link, it's random if he turns clockwise or counterclockwise. And whenever he bounces off a wall, it's also random if he turns clockwise or counterclockwise. So uh, you can't really guess where he is. You just kind of have to guess one of the chances and hope that you make a hard read. Yeah, it will also um, start to spin faster once you attacked him a few times. So it's it's just a mess once. He's oh, and also, if you hit it with, if you hit the claw with the wrong link, all of the claws come back. Oh yeah, <laughs> which is another thing that makes it really annoying. And the more claws okay, that he that. has off, the faster he goes. So usually, it's the most scary when you're blue, because you really don't want to yeah. hit the purple claw. Okay, so uh, tier two is a level that has gone through some changes pretty recently. I guess it's been like a year at this point, nine months, whatever. Yeah, something like that. It's been a while, but anyway. So, um, in this level, you used to do the bow minigame to get gems, because you basically skip this entire level by doing what he's doing right now, which is where you call the link. And when you call the links over, they ignore gaps, so you can precisely-ish call the link over. Hey, basically, um, this, this book that I have is like the last part of the trading sequence that you do in this area. Yeah, if you ever played this game casually, you probably know how how long the, the side quest in this, in this level is. But we skip all of it by, by simply recalling the links at a specific position. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we don't really have a lot of gems quite yet, but there's another trick that was found, as we said, fairly recently. I mean, a few months ago already. Yeah. Um, which lets us allow to get some some good gems and dupe a purple gem at the end of the screen. So the fact that this game has gem duping probably sounds like really good, like overpowered. Uh, it isn't actually that good though, because it's really uh, circumstantial. You need to have very specific conditions to really be able to do it in real time. Uh, you basically have to leave the screen the same frame you touch a gem. And right here, there's a gem right near the screen transition, so you can pretty easily do that. Uh, what like he did there. Yeah, like BB said, you, you basically just have one frame to dupe it, so I'm kind of getting close to the edge as I can, and just pressing, like, B and X one frame apart. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to be in, a, like, a particular position, too, in order for it to work. We're gonna do it two more times throughout the run, later on. Uh, one of them's harder, the other one's a lot easier. Oh yeah, 6-1, the super new yeah. one. That one is actually new. <laughs> yeah, like actually, like a couple days old. Yesterday. 
yesterday? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, so that was the first Shadow Link fight where there was more oh. than one. Um, whenever there's more than one Shadow Link, only one of them is real, and it's random, so you just have to guess. And ideally, you hit both of them at once. Yeah, usually that one's still pretty consistent. I mean, sometimes you can get uh, destroyed, but that's like the last one that's nice. <laughs> All the other Shadow Link fights from now on are going to be annoying. So, 2-3, Eastern Catalyst, uh, has also gone through a lot of changes over the years. Uh, this whole level is basically about collecting items and using them to make a bridge appear and open a door. But, um, we, we can skip everything. We used to be able to just skip the bridge part, but now we can skip the door opening part too, with the trick called zombie storage. So right here in the top left is he's gonna get GBAOB. Um and then die. <laughs> Sorry for the spoilers. Uh he's gonna take an intentional death. Are you sure I'm just uh, not really bad? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, he's gonna take an intentional death here. And basically what that does is it stores the death of the out-of-bounds links. And what that means is when he, he dies again, but on the main field with all the links there, the other three links will be dead, but Green Link will be not will not be dead. And that has some implications. Yeah, the out-of-bounds links will actually die out of bounds and be zombies out of bounds. Um, you might not immediately see it because the camera doesn't really show it much, but if you pay attention to the top left corner, you will at some point see, uh, see the blue link be clipped behind the the door. Pretty much, collision does not apply to zombie links. Uh, that's like basically how you can explain it. They can move through walls in ways that links that are alive can't. So, we're gonna move uh, Blue Link behind the door, because you can go behind the iron door like that for some reason. And once uh, you die one more time, they all come back to life, and you can switch to Blue Link and hit the load zone. Or load the uh, screen transition that's behind the door. Well, the history of this level is pretty, pretty oh. interesting. Um... So you need the lamp and the arrows in order to make a bridge and light the torches. So the torches open the door, and the arrow, uh, the arrows uh, construct the bridge or whatever. Um, so pretty much when out of bounds was found, we could we found out how to skip the arrows, but we needed the lamp, which is on the right side of the dungeon. Um, and then I guess once zombie storage was found. We were able to skip the lamp and just skip basically every item. You don't get any items in this level at all. Mm -hmm. Well, except for the boss. I think it's... Yeah. New Boomerang before the boss. A few pretty simple screens here. There is the tile room, which is pretty much an auto scroller. And then this room, which can be pretty annoying because you need to clear all enemies from the room. And these rats uh, are, can be really annoying to kill because they move really sporadically. Not too bad though. Uh, they actually move according to your to your input, so it's it's very easy to or not not very easy to avoid them, I mean. It's very difficult to avoid them. They're cheating. Mm -hmm. They can have they have like three frame reaction time or something. Like impossible reaction time. It's like fighting game yeah. AI and just read your inputs. <laughs> Uh, so for the first phase of this boss is pretty simple. You need to use the boomerang to knock off all the little eyes. And then second phase. Um You try to stun him as soon as possible, and then by doing quick spin with rolls in a particular way, uh you can get Sort of like double hits, and that'll lead to a one play both of The free one cycle. Nice, free. 
Yeah, that, that, that one... <laughs> That one cycle is really weird. I don't know if we understand how it works, but sometimes you just don't get the double hit when you do the spin attack. Mm. It's I think it's just all about timing, but it's uh, kind of hard to do it. Um... Um, so yeah, every time you get 2,000 gems, um, the sword upgrades, of course, to be able to destroy the barriers. But you also do a little bit more damage once the sword upgrades, so... The one cycle is only possible if you get... or if you already have 2,000 gems. Yeah. You also get, uh, beam swords if you have full health. And hurricane so. spin. Oh yeah, and hurricane spin, which is the most the important most useful attack. part. We're um, actually going to use Hurricane Spin yeah, once it's in actually this run. <laughs> and it uh, if you're time. familiar with Hurricane Spin from Windraker, it's basically the same thing. So, basically a powered up spin attack. You move around there. So 3-1, one, one of my favorite levels, personally. Um, except for one part. But, um... This first screen is just killing all the dudes. You get a 300 uh, after this screen. And I believe, did we? Never mind, never mind. Okay. I was gonna say something, but it was gonna be dumb. <laughs> never mind. Um, Don't worry. Uh, so, coming up here is gonna be the first, I guess, yeah, first formation hover of the run. Uh, so by using the C-Stick to do a formation on this wall, you can basically get stuck on the wall and move along it. And then roll onto that platform, and that'll reset your, uh, respawn position. Uh, so that when you- after you finish voiding out, you land on that platform and skip that entire room. And there's like a little puzzle there, where you need to, um, get the bow to hit some eyes and make a bridge. So it's a pretty big skip. It's like 20 seconds, I think. Formation hovers is one of like the first tricks found in this game, pretty much, and it's just, it's one of the worst things in this game. It's <laughs> super. There's a lot of formation hovers. There used to be a lot more, yeah. but they're largely obsolete now, which is good because they're really inconsistent. Um, so if I die here, um, it's really bad. <laughs> oh yeah. So he's care. Oh my god. Get hearts. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh -oh. So he's carrying that medallion, and you need to. Well, you're supposed to push the house around on this screen to kill all the dudes, but you can actually just carry the medallion in and you kill all of them this way to get the hammer. It's a real pain to do the screen normally by pushing the house. It takes forever. Yeah. It's, it's really nice that you can just use the medallion for it. Uh, yeah, it's really... it's it's sad, boys, when you have to push the house. Dying in this game usually isn't too bad, but when you're holding like medallions or something, you instantly drop them, so it's really that's the only time where it's like <laughs> super There's awful. two instances like that where we ca are carrying a medallion. Uh but that's the one where you're more likely to die. Because there's the I don't even know what those enemies are. Oh yeah, so these are the ogres. They have a lot of HP, uh which makes them really annoying. And also, whenever um, they spawn, they're facing a random direction, which can affect the fight a bit. I right, also have a lot of knockback on their attacks. Mm -hmm. So this is the lane part of 3-1. If you you have to get a GBA OB here, not bad. Third or fourth try, I think. And then you get up on that ledge. And ledges in this game can be super broken when you go out of bounds. So you get up on that ledge, and you jump off, and that can see what the top of the screen for some reason. And then you can go directly into this horde fight, and that skips this whole vortex type area. Uh, we have to do this puzzle. If you don't get out of bounds fairly fast on that screen, the ogres can actually be quite a hindrance to you. They can go in front of the entrance, and when you try to go back into the entrance, you will take damage. And if you take, or if you're in the taking damage animation, you won't be able to get out of bounds. All right. Ooh. Okay. So Z went for a trick here called Disco Gems, uh, where basically you set up the links in a specific way 
so that when you pick up the rock, you can also switch to blue and pick up purple, and pick up all four gems at the same time, while you're blue holding purple, uh, which will skip all four hold animations. We only um, got half a disco there, but yeah. it's still fine. <laughs> Z does a little setup for it, uh, which makes it a little more consistent, but it's still... It only saves like one second. <laughs> but... yeah. If you do the setup, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The inputs are actually quite, quite difficult to do fast. <laughs> uh, so starting off at 3-2 here, there's going to be another owl skip rolling while doing formations uh, to get around the owl menu. Alright, so here's going to pick up the four water pots and do a freeze clip similar to near the start of the run in 1-2. Uh, he's going to throw and hold C down, and that'll make the links clip down one, uh, one block, uh, and that skips a large portion of the screen. Which is good, because this screen's really annoying. He needs to, like, carry water pots. Uh, this level in general used to be really annoying, because, uh, there used to be a lot of carrying water pots and stuff, and carrying fire jars. And there's still a little bit of that, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Uh, coming up at the top here, there's gonna be a clip. If you do a C-left spin attack, uh, you can actually jump down from there even though there's pegs in the way and nice that gem that z just picked up uh, is on a cycle it alternates between being purple and green and you definitely want to pick it up when it's purple or yeah when it's purple because purple gems are 300 and also that means you haven't gotten the text from picking up a green gem yet because once you get that text once in a level uh you can't get it again and we're actually going to need that text up in a second here's going to do something oh my god it's too much in this game <laughs> <laughs> so that was something called floating link. <laughs> Toad, can you talk for a bit? <laughs> I mean, sure. So, um, floating link glitch is when um, purple, for, purple or blue is holding something and you jump and switch to a different link while they are still in the air. They will actually still be in the air when they're inactive or when they're active when you switch to them. Um, it looks a little bit broken because you're in the air and you can walk technically over things you would think, but actually you cannot walk over any pits or anything like that. But you can trigger the screen transition there because it can, you can walk over the the end or the yeah the end the cave entrance. <laughs> right. And we also abuse the hundred gem text box there in order to not take damage from the big explosion. That explosion is similar to a Nova bomb. You would. Uh just die instantly if you didn't have the text up and on the main screen. Alright, so I did a formation menu clip to get past that fire. Normally there's a whole puzzle there where you need to get a hammer and that lets you get into some guy's house when you get the water, I think is how it works, put out the fire. Um, old strats for this level were actually just carrying a water pot throughout the whole thing, which was really annoying. Uh, yeah, so yeah, one of the things that happened is, so you carry a water, water pot all the way to that fire, and so that means the the screens where there was the rocks where I just jumped over the pits, you would actually have to wait for the rock to land. Mm -hmm. And there are clips of me waiting there for like a minute and a half, just waiting for the <laughs> rock to land in the hole. Um, so a small thing is he did a, a jump slash around the corner there, and that was to skip an owl, another owl text. Alright, so home around fight. Oh, sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I'm going fast, alright? <laughs> We've all been there. Okay. Um so home rock fight in phase one you have to hit him out of the sky with bombs. And then <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I was just gonna demonstrate how dying doesn't really lose that much time. Yeah, this is what dying looks like. <laughs> Thank you, Z. <laughs> Always thinking of the people. <laughs> so weird. So you might remember this boss from Wind Waker. Um, this time you actually have to throw bombs at him. And uh, so that it'll go into one of the... One of the rock things. I'm not sure what... What are we calling them? I don't know. And like then you, above ground or yeah, then you need to use the hammer on, on its head for a little bit until the mask falls off. Then you do the same thing again, but um, it won't go into the into the rock rooms anymore, and 
you just have to smash it a few times. Yeah. You can uh, get a one cycle on that phase, but it's pretty tight. Uh, one not... cycle is possible. I've never gotten it in a run before, actually, but it's not that difficult. It, it's it actually... Uh, it's a lot easier if you do like a spin attack at first. Oh, really? Because you, you basically hit him on the first ring he lands, so you have a lot more time for it. I just... I, I missed a jump slash there, so that's why I didn't get it. Or I went too early. So three three is a level. Uh, it's it's really cool if I don't die. <laughs> it's probably one of the less broken levels overall because of its structure. You're basically climbing a tower, and you have to do every floor individually. Uh, since Z is doing FMC rolls, though, it'll look a little bit more broken than it actually is. <laughs> oh, I died earlier today. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh oh. It's all right. Let's see. Uh, so something to note about fire is that the hitbox actually goes away before the visual for them does. So it might look like he should get hit by a fire sometimes and then doesn't. Alright, so he did a roll there. He goes through the fire with a C right formation. So Here since fire is an actor, you can FMC roll through them. Ooh, nice. uh, the thing is, if you... Um, do not FMC roll frame perfectly, you will take damage and get clipped out again before you can actually go to the other side. And lose gems, because you hit fire. So that's yeah. I would never recommend anyone to do the FMC rolls it's through like fire. Three seconds. <laughs> yeah, but Z is, Z is crazy enough to do them in, in every one of his attempts. That one that um, I did, like, is basically just not worth it. But the one at the end, we can skip, like, an owl conversation. It saves about five seconds if you get it. That's a bit more worth it, but it's it's still... <laughs> I'm still... I would still not do it. Alright, so here he's gonna abuse the fact that when you call links over, uh, they ignore gaps again. And that skips meaning to get the rocks brother for that screen. Normally you would have to jump, uh, over to that platform, I think? Oops. I don't know. It's called a gas sag. Shout out to good names. Um, so this screen with the fire bars, there's a pretty cool strat where you can actually do a jump slash. And if you time it precisely, you can actually go over the fire bar because jump slashes raise your uh, Z coordinate, I guess, a little bit. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when you um, jump slash, you actually do jump. So you are kind of in the air to a certain extent. He also threw some links into the lava there on purpose, so that when they respawn, you have a few invincibility frames and can just roll through the fire. Alright, so this is the first shadowing fight. Ah, uh, I guess the one in 3 2 is bad as well. But this shadowing fight is also really bad. Um, if you, so basically, if you don't get. Uh, the right link in these first two, which he did not. Uh, you basically just have to wait it out for the cycles or for them to be bad. What is this? We can jump all over the place in this in this room. <laughs> They're way better at this game than we are. <laughs> it's true. Why can't they even jump this far? It's not fair. Um, so 3-3 three, three doesn't really have World 3, and I guess the big cinematic boss is in 3-2 for some reason, and at the end of 3-3 three, three is just the Dodongos, uh, which are awful. <laughs> so they move around randomly, and they open their mouth at random intervals, so just kind of have to go bomb in them, and they open up. The hitbox is kind of awkward to put bombs into their mouths, too. Fight is off. Do you want to talk about your Dodongo fight from earlier today in your practice run? No. <laughs> <laughs> in a run I did today, one Dodongo didn't even open their mouths and the other two were already dead. And you have to bomb them three times. It's pretty crazy. I guess something that to mention that is, in theory, if two Dodongos open their mouths and they're really close to each other, you can actually uh, 
use one bomb for two Dodongos, but it's pretty rare that you get to do that. Because they move randomly and they open randomly. I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh yeah. That's how often it happens. And sometimes you can also get the case where, like, uh, all three Dodongos open their mouths at the same time and you can't get to all of them. <laughs> That's the best one. And then, at the very end, he did the FMC roll through the fire, and that skips a short owl conversation. And you normally have to go to the right, to like an outside balcony, and you talk to an owl, and then when you transition back, the fire is gone that I went through. What's in Four one. Um. Oh, you know, I I I might show. Uh, I might take her inside the house or something. Oh. Although yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> to take take her underground. Is it the same thing? I think it's the same thing. Uh, just do the house to be safe, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at the start of this level, um. You have to escort Melon. Uh, this first part is a real pain if you don't know the strats. But if you go into the box formation and hold sword, the fire pretty much can't hurt you. Unless it hits you in a very specific way. So, you're not supposed to- I basically jumped over a trigger. Uh, right there. And so you can take her inside some of these GBA screens and she looks pretty funny. Yeah. I don't know what sprites they're pulling. There's one sprite- yeah, you can get some red stuff. Depending on which way she's facing. Pretty funny. Yeah, it's pretty Let's make good. sure to not soft up. Okay, that should work. <laughs> oh yeah. So you can act if you uh, activate this cutscene in a specific way, you can actually get it where Malin is running against the house for forever. And that's a soft lock. Which is pretty good. I don't think anyone's ever done it in a run. <laughs> uh well no, definitely not, because it's just slower. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a thing that can happen. So in this level, you're mostly supposed to use horses right here. Um, but we carry the, the carrot we get from the stone thing <laughs> uh, throughout, or through the level until we are um, almost at the end of the level. Where you would have to kill Gomas, and there is a pretty big side quest for you, or you would have to do to get the bow to actually kill the Gomas. Which then would give you the shovel. Um, but if we just carry the carrot all the way there and then use it, we can just kill the Gomas with the horses instead. It's it's a, quite a big skip and it's not actually a glitch, so this mm -hmm. level used to be glitchless for a pretty long time. Um, there is a small glitch now since we have gem duping, but. Mm -hmm. um, so this part's pretty funny and go in the house with the horses. Um, that guy gives you the shovel because the Z killed all the Gomez. So the horses are on a the horses are on a timer, uh, and they go away after a certain amount of time. Uh, and if you don't kill all the Gomez within that timer, uh, that's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. And your options are to either restart, get the bow, or do log strats. Anyway, so here Z's gonna do another gem dupe. Uh, there's a thousand gem right near the screen transition here. Which is really, uh, ooh, I missed it. That's yeah. not good. Um, yeah, so I think that that's like the hardest gem dupe in the run, and it doesn't really save much time, but I do it anyway. <laughs> Your uh, options for that gem dupe are like to do the trick where you have to hit, to do that with the, the version where there's like no good visual cues, or you can do the one where you have to do the three inputs on the same frame, which is really awkward. It's just, it's not good. At yes, least I we get to see you back in time now. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I won't be able to finish the uh, the stage with enough gems. So, well, I won't get thrown back to the beginning, but I'll get thrown back to where you're supposed to the horse area is. Um, most stages you do get sent back to the beginning, but for some particular ones that are split up into 
like two sections. It just sends you back to the beginning of the second section. You have a plan for a bit, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I have plenty to get more stuff. Right. So about the Gomez, if he had run out of horses, uh, the horse timer, the third option, other than restarting or just doing the bow quest, would be you can pick up the logs and kill the Gomez with it. Uh, but that's really hard. And it's only on Korean, too. So. Oh, yeah, it's Korean only <laughs> trick. Um, also, we just got the water element. Um, we need four the four elements for story purposes. <laughs> they don't really have much much of a purpose, honestly. Um, and we're also gonna skip one of them later on. But we got one, so... Oh wow, I didn't even know there were gems in that one. <laughs> to see some exclusive back-in-time strats. There was a point in time where the run did actually have back-in-time, when it was faster. It was in the last level. Um, I guess a cool quirk about gem fountains. Uh, whenever you hit a piece of grass like that and it has gems fly out, if you leave the screen before that uh, animation, or before it's done spitting out gems, uh, it'll actually respawn, and you can get infinite gems that way. It's just really slow. Now the best level. <laughs> the swan. It's already... It's already great. Um... So that's the only owl I think we talked to in this entire run now. Um, so right at the start, uh, you're, he's gonna do an out-of-bound shift here. This is also, uh, Nova Bomb screen, so, um, if you do your out-of-bound, if you are too slow on your out-of-bounds, uh, you can just have to wait sometimes. Because the Nova Bomb would have gone off. Like here, he got OB, but he has to wait in the cave, unfortunately. Um, if you don't get out of bounds, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> okay, uh, the screen transition to the left here is a little bit finicky, um, which is why you have to go in a um, certain formation first, so that it's a little bit better and you don't get stuck inside the wall there. I have self locked there before in, in some of my runs. <laughs> Uh, so in this screen, uh, you can make two quick lily pad cycles if you jump quickly. And the lily pad cycles themselves aren't very difficult. It's more picking up the gems at the same time as doing the lily pads cycle skips. Because mm -hmm. uh, the gems can be in, in pretty bad positions. Uh, so here he's going to do a little throw. Ooh, nice. First try. Uh, so throwing the link across the gap there is unintended. Uh, but it's precise. And here you can do something called a swamp double jump. I don't know how it works. Does anybody? I forget. You press buttons. And this is one of the tricks, the double jump is one of the tricks that you'll just really learn the inputs for and at some point you don't really know what you're doing anymore and you just press buttons and it ends up working. Mass memory is really strong in this game. But the second um, double jump actually allows us to skip a pretty big side quest of this level uh, and talk to or go to the house early to get the bracelets, which makes us strong enough to lift uh, to lift trees. Yeah. There's a whole graveyard section where you need to get uh, something, a moon pearl, and that lets you get to the other side normally. Uh, you can just do double jump. 
Some of the trees also contain gems for some reason, um, which are actually quite conveniently placed for us in, in this level because we're fairly short on gems. So it's quite nice that we just get like 600 gems from, from trees. This area is also dark, in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, <laughs> you're supposed to get the lamp, I guess, but if you know where to go, there's no real, you don't need it. I hope I get flamethrower. Same. Spoilers. <laughs> no, I... Well, this boss has a flamethrower attack, which is pretty rare, I would say. It's only uh, seen one run marathon at appearance so far. <laughs> so we're always hoping. It will take time. I think collectively, as a community, we've seen it like seven or eight times in runs. Yeah, maybe. it's definitely less than ten between all the runners. We all get very excited whenever he does the flamethrower attack. Even though it wastes time. Uh, so 4-3 coming up is pretty unique. It's one of the two levels that doesn't actually have any glitches at all. Um... Yeah, that's right. Uh, but it's still pretty cool in the first part, because you can, um, if you have a good movement, you can avoid these searchlights. If you get caught, you get thrown in jail, and it's faster to just leave the level and come back, actually, instead of doing the whole jail sequence. And legends say if you get caught by the lights, you get world record? Pretty much. Um... Another thing that makes 4-3 kind of unique is that the gem routing is actually pretty tight. Uh, probably has the most tight gem routing out of any level out of World War. Yeah, I think when most people play this level, at least in single player, uh, they probably don't have enough gems when you do it the first time. Unless they're really trying to So pretty much every gem happens. Yeah. This level. Which yeah, we even kill all the all the ghosts on that screen to make another hundred gem drop appear. Another interesting thing about this level is that in co-op, it's completely broken. You can just from from basically the beginning, you can skip uh, to the end. Uh, even you get not caught even on purpose. Levels. Yeah, and then you can get a boomerang in there. Boomerangs are really broken. Uh, which you'll actually be seeing later in this run, in the final level, so we'll get to that later. It's actually probably a good time to talk a little bit more about co-op, so... I saw earlier in chat that someone was saying they would like to see a 4-player uh, speedrun of this game. Which, trust me, you, you don't really want to see one of those. Um, first of all, 4-player probably doesn't really have any glitches, and it's just it would just be a real mess. Um, Single-player is definitely the, the best way to go for this game in a, in a speedrun. Um, Two-players are also still fine, because there's one specific glitch that lets you... Or rather, two specific glitches that let you um, skip quite a lot of, of stuff. But the more players, the more intense everything gets and more chaotic everything gets and it's just at some point it's a real mess so four player might be really fun for casual but it's probably not a very good speedrun yeah I, I would never want to want to try a four player speedrun it sounds awful especially because you wouldn't be able to to really skip anything and there's also um if you play a multiplayer at the end of each level there's a result screen um yeah. which <laughs> The, the developers probably wanted to compete, uh, or wanted you to compete a little bit. Um, the person who has the most gems or killed the most enemies gets, gets some bonus points, and getting first place doesn't really matter anything, but it's there at the end of each level, so... You also have to vote, too. <laughs> yeah, more yeah you have to vote for your favorite. Is it, like, is it who played the best, or is it who played the worst? It's something like that, right? Basically, who do you hate most and who do you like most? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, developers. So 
so this boss is pretty straightforward. Um, you light all the torches first to um, slash him once, and once you slash him, he will suck you in. And then there's this little thing that looks like Tingle, which you have to slash a few times, and you have to do that three times. That thing actually does quite a lot of damage, and in my very first run I did love this game, I died to, to this thing, so... I guess something to note is, uh, a lot of the bosses in this game have HP, so you want to do jump attacks, jump slashes, uh, because they do more damage than just poking with your sword or slashing. This guy does not work like that, he just works on a hit counter. You just have to hit him three times, so you just do pokes, so you can hit him as soon as possible. One thing that's also a little scary about this fight is that um, if you get hit by that little bug thing, you actually lose 50 gems. Uh, and like VB said, this the gem count here is pretty tight, so if you lose something, you're most likely going to have to do back in time. Nice gem spray. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> So each boss, by the way, um, drops uh, more than 750 gems. A little bit more than 750 gems. So you usually want to enter a boss at, at, with around 1250 gems. Thanks, stay hydrated, bot. Yeah, I'm gonna drink right now. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually. It's a good time. I need this in the Discord. That was also the uh, one of the two best maidens in the game. <laughs> Alright, we're quote unquote halfway through the run. First four levels, or worlds rather, are done. So world five starts with Lost Woods, where we also skip quite a big portion of the of the level. Um, usually, you would have to do a little a little side quest and give a is it a deck of scrub? I think it's a deck of scrub. Yeah. Um, certain items that uh, it wants. Uh, the, the items can be random, can be random. The items are random <laughs> that they want, um, but they're um, picked from a specific set of items, of course. Um, we skip that, though, by doing a... what is it called again? Uh, gap skip? Gap skip. <laughs> Thank you. So that's this right here. Um, you can carry enough momentum by doing a jump slash like that, so that... Uh, the Link's respawn point gets set to the other side of the pit. And you can do a reverse gap skip. Um, so now you have a key and a moon pearl. And you got the moon pearl without using a key. Uh, normally you would need to... Um, use the key to open a door to get a rock's feather to get over there. But because we did it without a uh, rock's feather, we can use the key for something else. Which will skip basically the whole uh, stage. Five one's a bit of a problem stage in that we actually skip so much of it that uh, we don't have enough gems, nearly enough gems, to beat it uh, if we just were to go through it. So you do have to do a good bit of backtracking. Yeah, we also burn the bushes and tree stumps to get a few more gems out of them. Because that's just it's just that tight. It's honestly pretty surprising that this is like one of the only levels where we have to do stuff like this. Um because there's a lot of levels that we just skip pretty much everything of, and we usually don't have to worry about gems too much. This is basically the only level where we have to do this kind of thing. Because we can go to the end right now. <laughs> Ever since we got the key, yeah. we could have went to the end. Oh. Um, well, ever since we got the lamp, right? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Um, those, I guess they're floor masters, uh, grab you and take you to the GBA world. <laughs> Whatever. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. 
so you want to avoid that. If you go right up against the rock and slash like he was doing, they won't grab you while you're slashing the rock. Which is good, because the rock is a very big source of gems. This level's pretty interesting because, uh, like that skip that we did in the beginning is, has been in the run since I've started playing, and I mean, when I started playing this game is basically when the speedrun started existing for all intents and purposes. Um, but the way that we've done that skip has been changed a lot. And it used to involve formation hovers, which, like I said earlier, is probably the worst trick in this game, next to Out of Bounds. Um, and it was definitely the hardest trick in the run for a while. But when you're formation hovering, it kind of... It, depending on which direction you're going, it changes completely. And formation hovering left is... super annoying. I'm very fortunate that I joined, like, right after the Gapscape method was found, I think. So I never had to deal with that. Alright, so next up is 5-2. Um, once again, if you've played this game casually before, you might remember 5-2 for being a very, very long level, because it, once again, has a quite a, a, quite a big side quest. Um, Again, though, we skip the whole side quest by doing a... What is it called? Jesus, I can't remember names. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> names are difficult today. This is another trick that's gone through a lot of revisions. Uh, you used to get zombie storage, which took forever. And then there was another method where you died and pushed the links through the fire. And I actually really like that method. That trick was cool. Uh, but now you can just do the formation menu click, and it's very fast. And that skips the whole side quest. Um, it's, also... quest. <laughs> it's also pretty interesting that they just allow you to skip the whole side quest, because after the Shadow Link portion here, there is another river section where they put a lot of gems in for, for I don't know, probably no reason really. But because of that, it allows us to skip everything, because there's still so many more gems we can get after the skip that it doesn't matter that we skip this much. Um, so this Shadow Link fight that you do after uh, the skip can be pretty bad, uh, because they can go into those holes, which then you just have to go after them, it's awful. And also, you don't have any weapons to stun them or deal with them at all. So that kind of makes this one really bad. Yeah, if you don't do that skip, you normally have the fire rod, and you can just kind of shoot stuff and stun them. It's actually one of the few levels you can beat with no item at all. Uh, yeah. Like Toad said, thankfully there's a ton of gems down on the river. I think this level um, used to be around like seven minutes long or something. Uh, if you don't skip anything, but now you can do it in like three minutes or so. And here's the the second jewel fight. Something to note is that uh, because he got two thousand gems. Um, before the jewel fight, his sword was powered up, and that makes the fight a bit quicker. Oh, I had 2,000... Oh, I had 2,018 gems and I screwed it up. I'm sorry. I, I was kind of... I didn't want to mention it. <laughs> I, I was a little, I was a little sad. Did, did I get the gem at the end? Of I the... think so, yeah. Oh my god, what yeah. am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, we usually have to get that. Yeah, yeah, I just wasn't thinking. So, yeah. So now we finally have the wind element, for once again story purposes. But, I mean, this game doesn't really have much of a story. So, there's not really much to explain about, about the, the elements. 
Except that they stole them from Minish Cap. I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the joke there is that this game actually came back, but, uh, this game, game came out before Minish Cap, which a lot of people don't realize. Yeah, pretty much everyone says that. Uh, yeah. This copied TMC. Um, so, the menu that pops up in between every level is asking if you want to save. And saving takes time, so usually we say no, but sometimes you accidentally say yes. Yeah. Waste a few seconds. What happened there? And a few safety saves are nice, though, for marathon runs. Although nothing really can happen except for in the last... Uh, never mind. That's one player's threats where something can happen. Well, I can just press B too many times and then, uh... <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's true. So 5-3 is one of my least favorite levels, probably. Ew. Um, it, There is a skip That's a in this That's a bad opinion. Zone. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, oh. So the reason why I don't, or why I dislike this level a little bit, is because of the section where you have to push this whole... What, what is it even? Like, the Decascript house? I always called it the house. I don't know if that <laughs> is an actual name. It isn't even really a house, but we have to push this whole thing to usually um, also get over there, but we do get a gap skip to hit the switches to get rid of the, the spikes. Uh, we still have to push the house over there, however, to destroy the spikes. Else we cannot get or enter either of the, of the screens on the right. And, and it's just not it's just not very fun to push or to pull around this house. That's why I don't like this level too much. It also has one skip later, as I mentioned, which is a little bit finicky to do as well. Uh this screen's kinda cool. Except when the turtle gets in point, and it's not cool. <laughs> um so basically what he's gonna do here after pulling the lever is fall off the ledge while in C left formation. And that sends you back to the beginning of the room. Do you know exactly why that happened? I'm not Sure. Uh, I don't know. I think it puts your position kind of like inside the wall or something. That would that would make sense. And so it just points you back to the beginning, I guess. Um, I think this is also a good time to mention the task that's currently being being worked on. Oh yeah. Uh, this level in particular is really nice to watch. It's uh, also when it's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when it's tasked. Um, the task or this is the last level that was tasked currently. The cast the cat. Jesus, the task stopped at 6-1 for now, but it's still being worked on. Uh, you can watch all the individual levels on Yadra101's speedrun YouTube channel uh, if you're interested in it. Uh, I would say you should definitely check out the task if you like the speedrun, because the task is a whole different story, which you will immediately notice once you watch the first level. It, it gets really crazy, because you can just do so many things in this game with task tools. Yeah, it's, it's just, you, you cannot even explain it. It's just crazy. Yeah, you just need to watch it for yourself, pretty much. It's the only way. Uh, so there, Z did a trick where he, um... What even happened? He did, uh... He did a charge death hammer at, um... And he, he hit the peg. Oh my god. No, somebody messaged me on Discord right now. I'm really mad. <laughs> I just need that. Okay. Um, while I was explaining that, someone was... Okay. Uh, he hit the peg through over the gap. Um, and that allowed him to throw a link into the gap from the dark world. And that skips needing to use a key in that room to hit a key block. And that means we can save the key for later, which is gonna skip a couple of rooms. This part is cool, because you have two keys at once. Which I don't think is ever supposed to happen. I don't think so. You might be able to do it in 8-3. I don't know. Oh. Mm, probably. I don't know. Actually, no, definitely, because of the way the trials work. Uh, I don't know. I was yeah, thinking I don't remember. Older. It's been way too long. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So this room is kind of cool. Z's gonna hit the lamps in a particular way, or when he hits the final lamp, he gets a freeze flip through that wall, and that skips hitting one lamp and going around. It saves a couple seconds, probably. This is one of the newer things found in the game, actually. Uh, so coming up is gonna be Bumper Guy's skip. It's a gap skip, but it looks really cool, because you basically roll over the entire top of the room. So he positions Red in a certain spot, and then does rolls, and he sets the respawn position to be, uh, the top platform. So when the links fall back, after falling out of bounds, they fall there. This trick is actually a little bit more, more annoying than it looks. It can be, can be pretty annoying to do, especially if you fail at once and the bumper guys are, are getting close to you and threatening you. Uh, Phantom Ganon 2 one cycle is free. There's no trick to it. You just kill him. This fight can be a little bit annoying if you... Or if one of the Phantom Ganons attack you when you try to hit back the the purple thing or green thing, whatever. Uh, right. Usually it's not too bad, but it can get quite a bit annoying. Alright, so that was the really important trick. That was the use of the hurricane spin in the run. Uh, there's a small cutscene trigger there. So, uh, it was really important that he charged up the hurricane spin, and then let go, and then switched to red when red was in the doorway. Uh, which skipped the text trigger. Yeah. Which is maybe like a second faster. <laughs> Not even that, it's, yeah. it's like nothing, but it's it looks cool. We have to do it because hurricane spin has to be useful. Fun fact, I've actually never successfully done that skip. <laughs> I don't know, it's just hard. <laughs> so the next world is probably the hardest world in the game, at least to do well. Mm -hmm. uh, but the next stage has actually kind of got revamped over the past couple weeks, especially yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, so there's going to be some interesting stuff in here. It uses a lot of FLG. You don't really see it too much else in the run, except for this level. So this level has a lot of, um, like, trap doors and pits that you can fall into. And when you're doing floating, uh, you don't activate those. So even though you're going over a pit, uh, the game doesn't count it yet. Holding. Or, because the pit isn't active. A uh, cute thing at the start here is you can push the uh, block in front of the pyramid the wrong way. It saves a second or two. You also saw that in the second level, but we kind of forgot to mention that. Oh yeah, because we were talking about other stuff. <laughs> Too much to talk about. Too much. <laughs> um, so in this screen, it's kind of weird. Uh, the There's a portal that leads to the GBA screen, uh, but it's on a cycle. It opens and closes, so you have to be sort of quick through this screen to make the correct cycle. Uh, it isn't too tight or anything, but you can miss it. It's a bit weird because this is like one of the only um, portals that's on a timer in the entire game. It's just one of those things they use once or twice and then never again. The Gibdos also have a million HP. Okay, he made the cycle there, which is good. Sometimes you get sucked back in if you go like. <laughs> oh yeah. Perfectly. It's really stupid. If you're new to this game, it's usually pretty common to miss the cycle at first in your first one or two runs. And you'll get a bit more used to the controls. Um, so there he did a floating link glitch to get over the, um, the sand pit. Because they don't suck you in until you... If you have floating link glitch, even if you go in like the middle part of it, it'll suck you in. But if you're just on like the edge of it, it won't. So this is the gem do. Uh, the really easy one, apparently. I haven't actually done this myself, but apparently it's really easy. Um, you dupe a few gems there, using the gem that comes out of the tree when you bonk into it. 
This is quite a nice dupe because gem routing in this stage is also a little bit annoying. Uh, we used to have to rely on the shadowlings at the end of the stage most of the time. But this dupe is it's not that big of a problem anymore. So another floating link glitch here. How is your doing floating link doing floating link glitch here by the way? We didn't talk about this was uh, when you jump slash you do get a little bit of height and uh, if you hold a direction you don't lose that height. So that's the other way of doing doing floating link glitch. Uh, that only gets you a very small amount of height, though, so it isn't good a lot of the time. Alright, here is the actual best trick move on the double bonk. Um, basically, if you bonk against something, you can hold a direction and bonk against an invisible wall. And it's really cool. And you use it to go through that room fast, and that's really new. Um, well, the trick isn't new, but using it in the run and having it be optimal is new. Uh, because of the gem dupe that was found. Yeah, I still transition on the right side because I think I'm doing the jump slash thing. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm going on that screen. Alright, so this Shadow Link fight uh, generally is one of the more tame ones uh, because you can just kind of kill them all really quickly. But they can... can go into the caves yeah. though. And if they want a good cave party, then it, you can lose a lot of time here. Yeah, usually their gems are necessary too, so after you kill them, you have to go in and get the gems. But with the dupe, you normally don't need to do that anymore, which is nice. Here we have the third jewel fight, where we finally get the fire element. Are they actually called for fire elements? Or yeah, I was, like, I've um, never heard of that before. Is that real? I mean, I don't... I'm just referencing TMC here. Okay, okay yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. They're just jewels, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh wait, aren't they the same shape as the elements in PMC? I, I think so. Yeah, they look exactly the same, that's what okay. I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> that's fair, that's four. They stole them. <laughs> this is actually the last jewel we get in the run, because the last one, which is in 7-1, uh, we have a skip for. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have. Um, so going in, going into six two, uh, six two has a pretty cool trick called Ninja Turtle Clip. We're basically we're gonna flip over a turtle onto another link that's not active, and then switch to that active link. And then from there, we can do a formation to clip into a block and hit a switch that we would normally need to use a key for. Oh, excuse me. And that uh, lets us carry the key later into the level and skip a large room. Enemy clips in this game are usually pretty annoying because the enemy as well as the links have to be in a pretty precise p um, position. So this one in particular is a little bit... Um, difficult to set up in my opinion. With a lot of practice you can do it pretty fast and consistently, but it took me a lot a long time to, to learn this, this, this is specific one. Along with like swamp and double jumps, this is one of the other tricks that I think takes people a long time to learn. Um largely because the turtles are very random. Uh, the green turtle can come up and get in your way, which is just annoying. And sometimes the blue turtle can be so far away. That, uh, you just, you can't do anything with them. You also have to know how far the turtle is going to fly, depending on the way you hit him. Yeah, if you hit, if you hit the turtle with, like, the hilt of your sword, uh, it'll go a little further. Uh, than if you hit him with, like, the middle. But if you hit him with the tip, he goes very far, so it's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of nuance to that trick. It takes a lot of practice to get consistent. 
Okay. Remember to pick up the key. <laughs> Uh, two really annoying rooms in a row here, pretty much. Uh, there's a cool strat here where you need to light both of those torches at the top. Uh, and you can use uh, the top right arrow to- or the top right torch to light the top left torch. Um, and this is the other really bad room. Um, because sometimes your arrows just disappear, like what happened there. Yeah, this room is just really bad in general from a programming programming uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. Last arrow in particular never lights the torch. Um, well, I shouldn't say never. There's it only way it only do. lights it if you haven't lit the other one, which is yeah. pretty cool. So you actually have to shoot two arrows there at the end to light the the torch on the top right. One of the few uses of C left there to hit uh, two of the guys at the same time. With arrows. Uh, these are interesting because these guys actually move the same way every time. They're pattern based. I don't know why those enemies in particular are like it. Or like that, but they are. And um, another way to, to kill these gomas here, uh, instead of using the bow, you can just throw your, your friends at them. So take that for, for your real life strats. If you ever encounter Gomez. Uh, so this is arguably the worst Shadow Link fight. Um... Because they go into these portals. Thankfully, Z got the green before he went into the portal. Or the right one before he went into the portal. Yeah, that fight is generally- it's probably like the second worst one, but... Usually, you can kill two of them consistently, so it's kind of a 50-50 shot. Um, the one in 5-2 is just a mess, and sometimes you can't even kill one <laughs> before they run away. Wasn't too bad here, though. Yeah. Do we have time to read a donation? Uh, sure. yeah. Alright, cool, cool. So we have a $60 donation from Beauregard, with no comment. Thank you. Um, and this is a good point to remind you all of our donation incentives we have coming up. Um, so for Olympian Worlds, we have a foul name bid war going on for that. Um, and we also have a bonus run of Ocarina of Time any percent being raced between Torridge and Richard Sage. Um, that right now is at 386 and it needs to get up to 500 to happen. So get your bids in if you want to see that. Uh, so, uh, this room that Z's doing right now, the center part is a trapdoor, so that's why he's doing the weird movement. Um, and this screen is cool, it's a Nova Bomb screen. It's the only one where you can get, like, a precise quick cycle if you do movement really well here. Uh, accidentally picked up that pot, so I'm not gonna be able to get it. Um, the rest of the Nova Bomb screen is pretty typical. Uh, you just need to not be on the main screen when the Nova Bomb goes off. Uh, so this trick, I guess 6 3 has another pretty infamous skip coming up. Um,. It's called Early Bombs, so basically the way this level is supposed to go is you need to get Pegasus Boots, or, yeah, or, what are they called? Pegasus Boots? Okay. <laughs> Pegasus Boots, yeah, level 2 Boots. Uh, yeah, level 2 Boots. Oh. Um, <laughs> and you use those to get into the center, uh, but what Z got instead is the Slingshot, and he's going to use that to do a stunned enemy clip, where he lures his Gibdo into a position. And then just a trick somewhere to near the beginning with uh one three. Where he'll clip uh this guy into a stun enemy and then into a wall. And then he can um get into once, the center area. Yeah, once once you're clipped inside the wall, you can start a roll 
and then uh, roll to the right into the next room. Not not into the next room, into the um, center part of the room. There we go. So I can try, not too bad. That's a pretty tricky trick. Uh, I know personally it's, it's given me like a lot of trouble over the years. Probably yeah, it's not, uh, it's not uncommon to lose go. runs because mm -hmm. of this trick. Um, so in case you don't know really what level 2 boots means, um, in some of these levels there is a great fairy that upgrades some of your items. Uh, not every item has a level 2 version, but bombs for example get a lot bigger and stronger. Um, the upgraded Pegasus boots lets, uh, let you walk or dash over pits, for example. And there's a lot of a lot of upgrades in this game, not every item has one. But we skip all of the great fairies, so no upgrades in, in the any percent run. Some of the upgrades are really cool. Uh, like the fire rod upgrade lets you create a little platform. So it's sort of a shame we don't get to see any of them. Yeah, it basically turns into the game of Samaria from a link to the past. Um, so this Moldorm fight can be really annoying. The strap for him is to get uh, a floating link glitch by um Jump slashing his head, uh, but you you can't stop moving when you do that, or else you'll lose your floating link glitch. This fight's also really poorly programmed because you're supposed to hit the tail with the color it changes to, but there's no penalty for hitting it with the wrong color, so you can just kind of spin slash and it will always work. It's the only thing in the game that's like that. They they didn't make that mistake anywhere else, I think. Please. I don't think so. <laughs> um, it's really easy to drop the floating link glitch here, but if you spin attack, uh, hit the tail and hit the head at the same time, and keep moving, uh, you will you will keep it. It's a little bit difficult to do though, and you will probably drop it a few times over or during the fight. Um, Moldorm also has a lot of knockback when he hits you, so if you get hit, you're very likely to get knocked into the pit. So I guess we rescued the last maiden here. The best maiden. Yeah, I, I get. She's all right. She's all right. Okay. All right. Yeah, you know, for some reason I never consider her. <laughs> she's okay. Now. So that was overall a pretty smooth uh, world six. A lot of the times you won't see such a smooth world six, especially because the tricks are just really finicky. This cutscene's also a million years long, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Good, you get to chill after round six. Oh. Yeah, so the next level, there's a lot of stuff that's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> right in the first, like, ten seconds. Um, okay, so, I guess we can start talking then. Um, so... So, World 7 is the ice world, so there's going to be a lot of ice on the ground. Um, and ice is a special property in this game, where um, you can slide on it, obviously. Sliding... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I should have practiced commentary. Um, so, if you slide and then screen transition with another link, you can actually preserve your slide momentum. Uh, through the screen transition, and that includes going out of bounds. So right at the start here, so he's going to go out of bounds using that method, and then he's going to abuse the fact that um, out of bounds ledges aren't very well programmed, and he's going to use that to uh, jump over this entire screen and go to the small out of bounds area, and then he can screen transition up and go in bounds and get the power bracelet early. So that's a cool trick. Yeah, the beginning of this level looks really flashy, which is why I really, really like it. Mm -hmm. It's also very fun to to just do yourself. Uh, 200 gem in the chest. You don't actually see 200 gem very much. Uh... Um, this horde fight, you come in through the back, uh, which makes it easier. 
And, uh, so what Z's gonna do here is he's gonna go into a cave, uh, this cave in the bottom right of the screen, and in this cave you get, uh, the medallion, which wipes out every enemy on the screen. Um, and I guess I wanted you to use that for the horde fight. That was the intention, I guess. Um. But well, we're actually yeah, gonna be using it for something else. Them. We're actually not gonna use it to kill any enemies. Or no, this one doesn't kill enemies, this one turns enemies into slime. Whatever. Um. Alright, so what's happening- I'll explain that. What's happening here is he's gonna do a uh, formation menu clip row through the ice here, because the ice is an actor, so you can roll through it. Um, and here we get the Penguin Massacre. Penguin fight used to be quite quite a mess, but um, nowadays we have some better setups for it. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to roll back through the ice too. Nice, well done. Formation menu rolls are really hard. Uh, you can practice them a lot. And then this is the big one. You need the formation when you roll through this ice wall. Ooh, very nice. First try. Uh, that's definitely, in my opinion, the hardest trick in the run. It's a lot of frame perfect inputs. Mm -hmm. and, and if you, you drop, drop one, it. yeah, if you drop one, you're, you're, you're gonna clip out again on the wrong side. Okay, uh, so you notice that he still has the medallion. Uh, we're almost at the end of the level, so you would think that there really isn't much need for the medallion. Um, but, well first we have to do lobsters on ice. Uh, there's gonna be a lobster fight. Second to last lobster fight, I think. Um... So, after the lobster fight, there's supposed to be the final jewel fight, where you get the purple jewel. Um... We're gonna skip that by doing screen transition. Uh, so you can get Out of Bounds here, and, um, this Out of Bounds was known for a long time. The problem is you can't screen transition off of this screen right away. Uh, the screen is locked, like, it will not let you screen transition. And for a long time we didn't, like, we just thought we couldn't do the skip because of it. It was discovered, though, that if you throw the medallion on this screen, that unlocks the screen, and you can screen transition out. Uh, so Z's gonna be doing that here. And skipping the jewel entirely. It's a little bit finicky to clip into the blocks there on the on the left side. Mm -hmm. So you have to use your links to push the other links in there into the small small little space thing there. Good English. And that uh, that out of bounds was known for like two years, I think. Um, before. Uh, it was known that you could actually do the skip. That was a really good 7-1, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so real quick, before we talk about 7-2, I saw someone ask in chat if skipping the jewel actually breaks the game. No, it has no effect on the gameplay at all. It's just a story item. Yes, if I pause right now, I'd actually say that I have a jewel. Oh yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, it actually has like a purple jewel in the inventory that is clearly in, you know... Makes sense. Uh, so 7-2 is really cool. They have, uh, there's a lot of cool tricks. No First pun off, intended. I'm mad. <laughs> uh, so starting off is this room. Uh, this is another interesting part where, um, he's gonna call the links over, and you're supposed to throw bombs to break the skull tiles here. But if you call over blue link, you can actually, or any of the links, you can just walk over the tiles to break them. Uh, and yeah, that's a lot faster than doing it the intended way. And coming up is a contender for horse screen in the game. Um, you have to have these four switches, and there's bomb chews, and the bumpers, and ice. And it's just really awful. It's really annoying to move around on, on the screen. Mm -hmm. Looks like it was pretty smooth, but... You also lose a ton of gems if the bomb trees hit you, so you, you lose... want to avoid getting hit by them. You lose like 100 gems. Around. Yeah, they can actually knock a big 100 out of you, yeah. it's really annoying. Some of the screens in this game are just... You can tell that they were just made as jokes. 
Like the penguin screen on the last, uh, the last level is one of them. Because there's about, like, 50 penguins on the screen at once. Uh, you can't see them because we killed them right away. Uh, so this <laughs> Shadow Wing fight is pretty free because you have Fire Rod to stun them. Yeah, you walk with the Fire Rod active into the cutscene so that once the, the actual fight starts, all of the links or Shadow Links are stunned and you get the easy hits on them. So this room's really cool. Uh, you have hit these three switches and the strat we do to hit them is pretty self explanatory, but it looks really nice. Um, so the gap skips in this level are really finicky. Um, the second one in particular just it feels like sometimes you do the same thing every time, and obviously it isn't actually random, but sometimes it feels like you just make it and sometimes you don't. Yeah, it's a little bit weird for some reason. Uh, whenever purple is carrying a pot there, for some reason, it's a lot easier than without yeah, carrying it. Yeah, it like pot. extends his roll, so it's easier to make it to the other side. So if you miss this trick a few times and get rid of all the pots, then it's usually quite difficult to to get the trick. If that happens, it's usually just best to reset the room. And try again with the pot. Uh, this work right's really cool. I like it a lot because you have Fire Rod. Fire Rod in this game is actually just generally one of the more interesting weapons uh, because you can tap it to shoot out a fireball or you can hold it to get the flamethrower effect um it's a shame you don't really see it more so on this final screen you're supposed to have fire rod level two um to hit five switches at once because like we said it creates a block uh but you can actually have green stand on two switches at once instead is a lot faster and easier. You can also do that on the first screen of this level, but no one oh, yeah. does it except for me. Yeah, he did it. Oh, did time. you? <gasps> Wait a second. I, I do it all the time now. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I approve. So a small cutscene skip here. Uh, you throw a link over a cutscene trigger and go into that door. And this is what the gems are for. They open up the tower to get to Ganon. Alright, next level is 7-3. 7-3 is the only level in the game where literally everything is um, 2D. On the main screen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it also is the only, well, besides 4-3, the only other level in the game that doesn't have any, any skips or glitches. So... It technically has, like... There's one skip, technically, that saves, like, yeah. 5 seconds. And also the beginning, I guess, where you skip the opening door thing. Oh, that yeah. doesn't count. <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> I'm trying, right? <laughs> um. So yeah, what's he's talking about there is, for some reason, only in this level, at the start, if you jump slash the door, you can go in without having to wait for it to open all the way. It's the only door like that in this game that's like that. Uh, but yeah, this game or this level is. Just a lot of tower climbing. Uh, like we said, all the main screens are 2D. So there aren't any formations you can do in this level or anything? Yeah. Everything is pretty in the 2D straightforward. Sections. Yeah. And the GBA screens aren't very interesting either. There's not much you can do in them. Uh, there will be one thing coming up, but that's about it. Uh, so in this level, you're supposed to get the slingshot, uh, but you can just do a C-right formation on this platform and then do a jump attack jump slash to hit those switches instead. There's also about two minutes of walking through doors in this level. <laughs> I've timed it. It's like two <laughs> minutes and two seconds, I think. Just over two minutes. Too many. Yeah. And this level is about seven and a half minutes long, I think. 
It's the longest level in the game. If you don't count the last mm -hmm. level, just kind of yeah. cheating. Yeah, because the last level is kind of like a two-part level. Yeah. Oh. Hope you like doors. Yeah. There are some pretty interesting strats in this level, though, in some rooms. This, the beginning part's kind of dumb. Yeah, the main gimmick in this level is you keep switching between the fire rod and the feather, because you need them for different parts of the of the level. Uh, so Thorm screen is really good. Um, there's a strat where you have to, you don't have to, but you can uh, throw the link onto the switch, and uh, well. After you uh, activate the ladder in this room, there's a strat where you can uh, throw the link onto the platform earlier than intended. You don't have to wait for the thorns to come up. The yeah, thorns are quite glitchy, by the way. If you throw a link and then land on the thorn, you're kind of stuck in the throwing animation oh, yeah. for some reason. It's um, really weird. <laughs> I can see, I thought you were about to ride the thorn up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this part, uh, these icicles fall and freeze you, so he takes damage on the spikes intentionally to, um, avoid getting um, if, frozen. If you get frame-perfect rolls there, you actually skip the, the knockback animation. Oh, yeah. Which could, can be a little bit faster. Yeah, I usually try for that each time. It takes about like two or three seconds to eat it the first time. It's pretty hard though. Speaking of frame perfect, you could technically FMC roll through that ice frog thing. Oh yeah. I but it's it uh, way too many rolls for yeah. how little time it saves. It's and you still you still need the fire rod anyway, so Yeah. It's it doesn't really skip anything. Besides it's the melting. Just a damage. little bit of a faster strat. Um, if you're interested, there's also ice in this level, of course, and you can do some ice screen transitions, particularly on this screen, which will put you on the right side of the screen, and all it does it is make, or all it does it is it makes you fall down the whole tower again, and it doesn't skip anything, you just go back to the beginning and actually soft lock. so. It's like some Bennett Foddy stuff. Um, this screen is kind of cool, I guess. It's the combat screen. You have to put the floor for the flying eyeballs and then kill all the slimes to make the tiles appear. By the way, uh, we haven't really mentioned combos yet, have oh, we? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, if you kill a lot of enemies um, without taking damage, the combo counter goes up. And the higher their combo counter is, um, the more gems you get as a bonus. Uh, I forgot what exactly or how many exactly you get for, for each combo, do you know? I think once you get to 50 kills, you start getting 50 gem drops. And then at 70, you get Force Fairies? Uh, it's... so 30 and 40 are 50. Oh, okay. And then, I kind of forget what's after that because it doesn't really come up too much, but it's different per version. So. Oh yeah, on PAL, yeah. Uh, you can actually get 1,000 gem drops from combos, which is pretty cool. There's also 2,000 and 3,000 gems in the game's code, uh, but you never see them in the game. Also, even though this level sucks, this is probably one of the best bosses in the game. Yeah, this boss is pretty cool. Even though... Oh. <laughs> and you have to kill him with the, uh, stab downward. Or else he just won't die. 
And I didn't know that for a, a good while. And I lost like a minute one time. He just wouldn't die. Is it actually just like not possible if you don't do Yeah, he just doesn't die. Oh wow. Didn't I didn't that. know that. So fun fact is when you spawn in this room where Zelda is, uh, the game automatically gives you floating Link Glitch. There's no way to not get it, so... Glitchless is impossible. Yeah, if you actually hold a direction as you kind of pop up there, uh, you can't, uh, like, change formation or whatever because you're in floating Link Glitch. It's really silly. And you can see we have the uh, purple gem as well once the screen comes up. Showing that we got Zelda. So I think World 8 is probably one of the most fun to watch. Um, yeah. There's a lot of visual glitches going on. <laughs> so. So 8 1 will feature some screen transitions that aren't possible on the US or on the European version. Oh yeah. Finally, why we're playing on Japanese. <laughs> I have, uh, there's some other minor differences, like, on the other versions, whenever a Link is falling into a hole, uh, you can't actually switch between Links on non-Japanese versions. Oh, that's true. Which is really annoying, uh, it makes gap skips a lot more difficult. So you, you can jump slash to the screen transition triggers there and actually trigger the screen transition, which is only possible in the Japanese version for some reason. Uh, it allows for some for some skips in this level. Alright, and this is the final lobster fight. Um Lobster in heaven. <laughs> and after this uh gem rain is gonna be the scary trick. Oh wow, there's not many gems. Um, so basically after you screen transition there, you have a six frame window, I think. It is to press L to regroup uh, before you start your hover, and if you miss that six frame window, you stop block. Which is pretty good. It's a pretty good trick. And you lose a minute, because you have to do the entire first part of the stage again. Yeah, we use the formation hover there to skip uh, a key, which we would need the hammer for. And the formation hover here is usually the one that people like a lot to watch. Um, interestingly enough though, it's not very difficult to do or, or anything. All you have to do is hold C right. That, yeah. That's literally all you have to do. It's very, very easy to do. I guess worth noting that when if you want to change hover directions while you're in mid-air, um, you don't technically have to, but it's easiest to pause and change directions. Uh, because if, unless you change from C right to C down, for example, in one frame, uh, you won't um, be able, or you'll just fall. And here he takes an intentional death uh, to push Red Blank through the fire. He could have done an FMC roll, but his health was low, and he didn't have, the, or he didn't have 2,000 gems yet. This can be a little bit annoying sometimes if the Dodongo oh. stand in front yeah. of the in front of the fire, which is also called the Dodongo defense. Oh, yeah, it didn't see. work, unfortunately. So we went for the FMC roll, but um, yeah, I'm just trying to clip again. This scope can be annoying. Uh, it just doesn't work sometimes. And thankfully, there's a 100 gem on the final screen. For some reason, it's invisible. It actually took around two years to know that there was a uh, green gem there. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Dang. Um. But yeah, this level is actually a little bit scary for new runners, especially uh, because the first formation hover to skip a key with and a hammer can actually soft lock if you drop it, so you would have to restart the level. Mm -hmm. Which actually happened in my in my second run where I lost 8 minutes, so... <laughs> Everyone's done it. Yeah. Plenty of times. It feels really bad if you miss it. 
thankfully it didn't happen here. Um, so A2 starts off side scroller. Um, doesn't stay like that for long though. Yeah, the first half is is 2D section once again, and the second half is all 3D. 3D Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so here there's actually a cool trick, uh, where you, uh, you do, you switch between links and side hop, and that puts you in the exact right position to shoot those arrows, uh, horizontally, instead of riding the cloud and shooting them vertically. Alright, and there's actually a really cool trick here, uh, which is surprising, considering it's in a 2D section. Um, so basically, this is a different type of screen transition manipulation, um, where you do some glitchy stuff on the clouds and basically that let red link get up to that ledge and then get called up there and then skips that whole room and it skips needing the bombs yeah, it looks very flashy and <laughs> i learned this trick about five times and i still don't know how to do it it's weird like i had to relearn it a bunch too it's not hard, it's just every step is, like, particular. Yeah. It's very fun to do, though, and it also looks really cool. Mm -hmm. It doesn't save too much, but it is pretty notable. Uh, so this Nova Bomb screen... The cycle can be a little tight. I guess something to mention, uh, this has happened a few times. There was a wall that you were intended to use bombs on. Um, but you can just do a jump slash upwards and then pound down. And that counts too. For breaking the wall. Um, so this part is gonna look funky. He's gonna kill the wizards in this weird way. Where he jump slashes at them. And you might wonder why he's doing that when he has arrows. Uh, and you could just do that. Um, for some reason, if you kill the wizards with arrows, you don't get gem drops from them. So, you have to kill them with your sword for this rep to work. And this hover can be pretty finicky too, you have to go around the corner like that and then drop red off in the corner. Yeah, usually uh, if you miss this once or twice, uh, you're usually gonna miss it a lot of times. And this whole hover sequence skips to the hammer. Uh, the hammer route uh, for this level was actually really cool. I liked it a lot. Um, but yeah, it's a lot faster to skip the hammer. It saves like a minute or something. Um, the spike mace isn't correctly loaded if you don't hit any of the switches for some reason. Oh yeah, so you can just kind of go around. Yeah. Because we came in through hover. There's also like eight hearts in those spots for some reason. I always thought was pretty funny. Oh, so something to talk about, the sword fight's actually kinda interesting. Uh, that gem, there was that big soldier, before Z killed him, uh, he shot him a few times with the bow. And the reason he did that is for some reason, whenever there's a gem soldier, or not gem soldier, a soldier guy like that, if you shoot them with a bow, every arrow you shoot them with will end up being five gems that they drop when they die, along with the hundred that they drop. Uh, so he used that, I guess, as a safety measure in case the gem ring was bad. And this is a pretty annoying hover here to get over. Uh, skip, you normally need to light the torches in this room with the lamp, and then, um... Uh, shoot the fire across with the arrows, but you can skip doing that with the hover. And then finally, the biggest skip in the game, mirror skip. Uh, there's a very long scripted fight with a bunch of shadow links there. And eventually Zelda comes and makes a rainbow bridge uh, to go across the gap. But you can just do a gap skip. There's actually multiple ways to do that skip there. Thankfully, the fight doesn't trigger right when you enter the room. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you do trigger the fight, you actually can't do the skip anymore because the screen transition is locked. Okay, so this is the title screen. Uh, the run's over. No. <laughs> Good joke. I mean to do that. Um, We're gonna so, switch to co-op here, because, 
Well, as I mentioned earlier, Co-op has one interesting, one interesting glitch that lets you skip quite a lot of things, uh, which is called SBA, or Sick Boomerang Action. Um, so now we're in co-op mode. Uh, so, Z is controlling both co-op players at the same time. Very impressive. Yeah, it's actually quite difficult to, to do this by yourself. This is course. the hardest level in the game, in my opinion, when you do it this way. I don't know if Z agrees with me on that or... Uh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, um... What the what the boomerang glitch does is, uh, if you throw the boomerang, then pick up a link, and when the boomerang comes back to you, for some reason, um, the state of links you you um, picked up gets really glitchy, and lets you walk over literally everything. You can walk over walls, you can walk over doors, and you can even walk into the next room. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, like, it's really uh... weird. It's like earlier, when we did the like like glitch, very early on in the run. It's very similar to that. You can go anywhere and do anything. So, we're basically going to skip the entire level. Normally, you have to do these four trials. And there are skips for those, but they're very slow to do in single player. Um, the, the multiplayer out saves about a minute if you do everything well. But like we said, it's extremely difficult to do this part well. Uh... Yeah, the Goma room here in particular can be really annoying. So we're already at the boss of 8-3 oh. Part 1, uh, Vadi, and the Vadi fight in co-op is just terrible. Um, so when you're playing... So in this fight, you have to throw bombs into the Vadi tornado. And for some reason, um, in co-op, you have to throw more bombs. It's it's really dumb. You have to throw, like, six? Yes. Yeah, I think? As opposed to three. I guess... It kind of makes sense to make you throw more in co-op, but it's also just really silly. It's a bit sad because um, the co-op strats for this um, for this level could be a lot faster than they actually are because they made body more difficult. Mm -hmm. Or not really more difficult, just give it more health. <laughs> Um, also, there is a result screen at the end of, the, of this level, but uh, timing ends before the result screen actually comes up, so it's not... it doesn't lose any time according to the timing rules. Uh, phase 2, we can't see the downside of JBA. But something happened, and it was probably fast. Yeah, you have uh, the, have to hit Vadi a few times in, on the GBA screen once you throw enough bombs at him. And there's also a cannon there, which you have to use to um, do the down thrust on him when he's stunned. And the way you stun him is, well, he doesn't have to be stunned, but it's a lot easier when he's stunned. Especially in co-op. I think he's more evasive in co-op. No, I don't think so. He, he has to be stunned. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, in, uh, in, in single player, you don't have to stun with an arrow, but for co-op, they make you do that for some reason. Which makes sense. Um, so yeah, that was Vadi. Uh, so now all that's left is Collapse and then Final Boss. Uh, collapse used to be really boring back when people did only one player strats. Uh, but with two players, it gets pretty interesting because Thick Boomerang action also works on Collapse. And Collapse is a 2D screen. So when you combine the sick boomerang action with the collapsed duty, it gets pretty uh, funny looking. The collapse also has a few soft locks for some reason. Yeah. Uh, it's not very stable. Yep. Yeah, even uh, the last set of text boxes that I did, where we were in some kind of, like, area with Ganon statues, you can oh, actually... Yeah. So the links are actually off-screen, and you can pick up one of the links, and then I'll soft-lock their game. And also, yeah. Zelda can soft-lock in, like, three different ways. Mm -hmm. If you know what you're doing, it pretty much can't happen, like, on accident, but if you aren't as aware of what's going on, you can soft-lock. Uh... But if you know what you're doing, it should never happen. 
Unless you find a new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless you find a new one. Might very well happen. Oh, so I guess, uh, this fight, uh, Z got sick boomerang action. And, uh... Use that to fight fight him all out of bounds, and then screen transition down once the screen transition was unlocked, so he could hit that switch right away. Yeah, with the sick boomerang action, it can already be on the next screen, and then once you trigger the screen transition with the other link, um, you will be in that specific position where you where you walked into with the glitch. The screen, I guess, is the easiest Zelda soft lock to do. If you uh, let, if you get off that switch before Zelda finishes crossing the bridge, uh, there's a good chance that she'll just run in place forever and it's a soft lock. That's probably like the most realistic one that can happen. You aren't paying attention. Yeah, actually, when uh, Big John played this casually, he ran into that soft lock. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Bless. I think uh, Trey did it on a run once. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. I forgot if it was in a run or not. Alright, well, plot twist is coming up. <laughs> if you thought uh, Vadi is the end boss of this game, then you're in for a surprise. So Ganon uh, is really annoying in co-op. Um, does he have more help in co-op? I don't think so. Okay. Doesn't seem like. But um, something you need to keep in mind is that we skipped the gem barrier here uh, in this level, which means we never powered up our sword. So our sword's actually really weak. So it's going to be doing less damage. You also take quite a lot of damage during this fight, which is why Z got the blue bracelet earlier. Uh, which halves the damage you you take, and even then, it's it's very common to still just die. Yeah, I think co-op dying is like expected, pretty much. No, I could be wrong though. I haven't done co-op as much. Yeah, I mean, I, I usually die. So in in two-player co-op, um, usually both players control two links. But you can also steal one of the links from the other player and have three links at the same time, while the other person only has one link. Um, it's used in this uh, Ganon fight because it just does more damage if you have three links. Uh, so this attack Ganon does uh, with the lightning. If Z gets hit by that when he's not in iframes, it'll suck him into the dark world where he... Um has to do like a little mini boss fight to get out at least a lot of time. So you need to make sure that you're getting hit there by Ganon. So you don't get sucked in. The staff also does a lot of damage. Uh, I think it does half a heart with blue ring. So, yeah. yeah. The hitbox of, of the trident is gigantic by the way. And it leaves behind the fire for a little while, which makes it even harder to avoid. On this. And the knockback is pretty crazy too. <laughs> it's then all the way to the other side of the room. This fight, um, it's kind of fun, except, ooh, didn't die. Nice. Um, Dang. So phase two, uh, it's I guess the traditional tennis phase, where Ganon throws the energy balls. And you have to knock him back. In co-op, he throws them uh, colored energy balls. Yeah, you have to throw them or slash them back with the link that corresponds to the color of the block. The, or the block party of the ball. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be with red link. It can be with any of the ones that red is with. Thankfully. Uh, time's coming up, by the way. For him. Oh, actually, we do use L2 items at some point, huh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah you can get L2 uh, bell. <laughs> yeah. Dang. 
It's your time if no one heard, but yeah. Oh. We'll oh okay. <laughs> Um, our timer is going to be a little off. Yeah, that's like a 208. Yeah, 208 20 was the final time. Okay. Not bad. Good stuffs. Good run. Marathon world record. <laughs> the most important record. Yeah, there you go. That was a really nice run. Awesome. Thank you so much, Seamaster, for that run. Um, yeah, thank you. Do you have anything you want to say or shoutouts you want to give or anything? Um, we're going to be at SGDQ. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm running this game at SGDQ. BB uh, will be there, and hopefully Dan. Dan. Um, Dan. And, yeah, so it should be fun. Schedule's coming Shout out to the whole Flawless crew. Yeah. yeah. And thanks for uh, being but... Toad for commentating. <laughs> sure. Thanks um, for if you're interested really in learning fun. this game, we have an FSA Discord. Um, where we, of course, always help if you have any questions. So if you want to learn this game, then feel free to, to join the Discord. All right. Well, with that said, uh, we'll switch to the break screen.